What's everyone? <laughs> What's everyone? <laughs> <laughs> everyone welcome back to another episode of meta context a show where we brennan and myself we go through the metrics we go look at tweets that we post and we just tell you basically what we're doing as a business i'm your host graham uh, co-founder cto soapbox with me today as always brennan mckechran my co-founder and i guess partner in crime i'm robin he's batman no i'm um, robin i i well i guess you have the utility belt with all your different gizmos and um i just say look out batman <laughs> Graham, I'll pass it off before I even open up the metrics. What's your feeling of last week? I think I'm an 11. I'm an 11 <laughs> out of 5 for the business. 11 out of 5. We do yeah. rate our weeks. We go through our metrics. We get the team to rate the week how they felt like we did. Graham had the highest score of the team and the highest yes. score he's ever had of any Bullish. week. Any mm-hmm. week ever. Highest score. Why? It's not about yeah, our metrics. Name- <laughs> It is not about our metrics, so let me just clarify. About our metrics without the other news, I would say I'm a two out of five. Okay. But what we've been working on is getting into this program, and we were accepted, and I think that's going to be a game changer to our business. So we got into Y Combinator. Okay, that's the news. Let's get that out of the way. That's the news. We got into Y Combinator. With the reset of the business, we had an opportunity where it feels like we're starting something brand new. We're starting the Meta Context show. We have a basically brand new name of the company, Hyper Context. New sprint numbers. With a new logo. New new sprint numbers. Everything felt fresh and new. We're like, let's apply to Y Combinator and just see what happens. Yeah. So we applied, not thinking we would even get the interview. And it was on my bucket list. It was on your bucket list. So let's just do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, And then we got a yes, yes, but it was like almost like a conditional yes. Well, it was a conditional yes. It was like, it hey. Was 100% a conditional yes. This is all really cool. We want you in. We just don't want to dilute founders and employees. But obviously, coming into YC, you need to make an, uh, we need to make an investment. So that's got to dilute your your investors only. And uh, our, we didn't think our Which investors were going to let that fly. So like, It's a pretty wild ask to say, hey, VCs, thanks for the funding. And can you divest a little bit? make room for these Y Combinator people? Yeah, like how do you how do you do a round and get more equity and everyone else and your investors don't, but they give you money. So that news gave us a high. That gave us an 11. A panic, adrenaline-fueled yeah. 11. Panic 11. What's muting that 11 a little bit is like, I think some of the results that we're seeing are kind of like, eh, meh. So let's go over it really quickly. It's not as bad as I feel. I just think, I just think like, what I want is different. I feel maybe more like where our monthly active users are at than where all these other numbers are at. To me, it's like basically we're flat. Mm. The other yeah. thing is we have um, uh, we had ad spend. We now have zero dollars of ad spend. So it is getting better. It's just it, like we're getting better unit economics out of it. And I think that's like when I've been talking to Hiba about some of the stuff I want to do, she's like, what's the balance between optimizing for CAC and LTV and how do I find the rate? Like, I don't want to screw mm-hmm. that up because we're in such a good spot. I don't want to mess that up. You know, economics are yep. great. No, that's understandable. Yeah. Versus like, grow crazy. Let's spend a ton of money. Let's hire a yeah. big team. Right. CAC blows up. Yeah. Let's spend a ton of money. CAC blows up. Payback period goes out the window. You know, all of a sudden we go from being a profitable business to like a wholly unprofitable business. That's not good. So what's the balance? Yeah. And similar to, I think, like how you think about um, some of the stuff on the product side, but we're going to overspend right now to increase the pace of learning. So... The, the goal right now is not necessarily blended, fully loaded, blended cost of acquisition. It's cost of acquisition per channel. So say we spend $1,000 on LinkedIn um, and we get one paid customer for it. That makes our CAC look bad overall. But what it actually does is you say, okay, LinkedIn sucks, throw it out. And so I think what we want to do is spend money to rapidly figure out which ones are going to be like, like run like 13 experiments across different channels and figure out which ones are going to, mm-hmm. are promising. And then let's take the promising ones, see, you know, what our scale possibilities are and then optimize it for CAC. We had done a lot of this type of uh, like thought process, try a bunch of different acquisition funnels before. Yeah. Is that all thrown out the window? Does it, none of it apply? No, I, I think it's, it's actually the same basic playbook. Um, the okay. difference is back then, the only thing we were testing was one-on-ones. Mm. Like we never yeah. test a team. We never test okay. a goal. We never really got into things like accountability. We didn't even really have next steps. 
Yeah, so we are basically getting rid of all that and starting fresh, a brand new perspective, whole like new feature offerings in the product, a new way of talking about what, what it is that hypercontext does. Yeah, it's a pretty hey. solid rationale to burn some some capital and try yeah. to get us some more acquisitions. So then if I look at just those numbers, the activated logo section again, none of the stuff before the the beginning of this year matters, really, because it was all a different type of user base. Uh, if you go back it looks here, like no growth. I know. Like it looks it does. flat. It does and look I think flat. to our employees, it looks demotivating, when the reality is they're way better people now than they were before. Yeah. So it is growth. It doesn't necessarily look like it. Final week of trial, <laughs> new customer. <laughs> it's almost like we rolled back our new pricing modal and everything went back mm -hmm. to normal. But, but we didn't. We didn't. No, we didn't do anything. Normal. We left it. What we did was just add some more metric tracking just so we can yeah. actually look at the funnel in depth and just see what it looks like compared to our previous modal. Um, so we are starting to look at the, the data now. It looks like most, for the most part, there is um, good growth and, and good conversion rates up until the right where you make that decision to pay. People are opting to click a button to have a demo instead of actually paying us. So that seems to be the one piece where we're losing out on that uh, piece of conversion. So yeah, and I think at. I think like further further analysis needed on it. Like, let's see. Mm -hmm. Like, <clears throat> if this next week is bad, then the data is going to skew in a different w way than if this week is good. What do you think? Like, when you look at all these numbers or these lines, what do you think our biggest opportunity is? Because we're going to talk to Calvin, and he's going to ask yeah. us, "What do you think is the biggest lever for growth?" I mean, it's the people coming in. Like, there's so many people coming in, and we're not converting them over. So it means there's something in our or onboarding or in the way that you start to use the product that doesn't, just, doesn't feel right and then you don't stick. I just don't know. So. I just don't know. Like you're probably right, but at the same time, like sometimes people just sign up for things with no intent of using it. Or like I've been guilty of that. Yeah. yeah. There's a bunch of services I've signed up. Like as soon as I sign up with my credentials or like I use the connect with Google, I'm like, I don't want to do this. Yeah, what is that? Why, yeah. what causes you and to then do that? Is that I just like the benefit the pain? To... Yeah, and you get the newsletters. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But then again, like I probably never would have converted to pay because I didn't even try out the product. Like I wasn't seriously mm -hmm. trying it out. So mm -hmm. then I'm glad I bounced right away. Like I, maybe I want these users to bounce if they're not the right fit. I mean, if they're maybe, ICP, we don't want them to bounce. And ICP is uh, ideal customer profile yeah. for those of you who don't. Yeah, we watch should do. Them like we should do a session on that. The other thing that I've been looking at, like if you look at our weekly stats of um, expansion and contraction, they're sometimes bigger than our monthly stats of expansion and contraction, which caused me to be confused as hell because I was like, hold on a second. How come these numbers don't add up? Like if we expand, say, $1,000 in MRR every week, mm -hmm. how come by the end of the month we only expand $1,000? Like shouldn't we be expanding $4,000? But the way that the, whatever the program does the math is it's, it's looking at within the week, this is the expansion that happened. And then within the week, here's the contraction that happened, right? Like what's the net? expansion what's the net of the month it's expansions happening but so is the contraction so are we not selling yep. the benefits of the expansion or selling assisted pathway to helping them expand sustainably versus like someone being like oh shit, i'm expensing this and i don't want to get too expensive and so now i'm going to start banning people from my own company from using it and then we're shooting ourselves in the foot from an active user expansion that's one of our issues with our approach to get a small team adopted, like the $5 mm -hmm. deal, yeah. causes you to put on your personal card. As soon as that starts to explode and you, you like the engagement with your team, you're happy paying a bit more, but then once other teams start to adopt it, that's where you start to bring bring down the hammer and just basically cut off their access. Yeah. And then they have this weird experience where they were using Soapbox get, with their own teams and then they immediately get banned once that email goes out that says- And then they, the they come in and they try to sign up. It's like, ah, you're, yeah, you're screwed. Exactly. So I think there's optimizations there for that poor person who was using it and is yeah, yeah, yeah. who was just only removed because the person who was paying didn't want to pay for that. They person. might not even know who this person is. Yeah, exactly. There's so many areas where we have to add these little growth tests. Monthly active users, we kind of bounce back. Um, we will, uh, I think, start leveling out here unless we start doing something yeah. interesting. I think this is an unfortunate peak right now. Um, looking at this week's metrics, it is a drop about people from last week. So I think it's going to plateau for a little bit. But we'll the new changes see. that we're going to launch within the next month will help increase that number. We'll see. I mean, you so guys are not too, too worried yet. Okay. All right. Yeah. Let's talk about tweets. Okay. I'm going to start with your tweet's not a tweet. It's a, it LinkedIn. a LinkedIn post. And it was a share. It was a reshare of, I guess, a Soapbox blog post. So we wrote a blog post, um, 121 battle tested 101 question. Do, should I share the secret behind this blog post and why it's so successful? Or should we not share the secret? I don't want our competitors to do it. Okay. 
<laughs> Don't share the secrets. Okay. But it ranks number one for like a keyword or whatever. It does. It's Unless got a bunch. If you want to share it, nah. you can give away our secrets. Just get new secrets because they're going to steal them. They're watching the show right now. They're going to take all of our secrets. Comment below if you want me to share about that. Yeah. Okay. I'll give, give the, the people note, what they want, but I don't know episode. what they want. Yeah, yeah. We'll share. <laughs> okay. So we have an article that goes into a whole bunch of questions you should ask in a one-on-one -on -one meeting, um, question prompts, conversation starters, icebreakers. Graham says, here's a fun idea. And he puts the joystick emoji. Give us your idea. Yeah, my idea was you take those questions, you run a thing I call one-on-one -on -one roulette, you go to the, the blog post, you scroll down, and then at a random spot, you just stop. And whatever question you land on, you just copy that question into your next one-on-one. -on -one. So whatever one-on-one -on -one it is, you add that question, and you'll have some sort of thought-provoking thought conversation around whatever that topic was. Maybe it's or, innovation, maybe it's about growth. Or yeah. in Soapbox, you click the suggestions and you scroll and click without looking. Yeah, yeah. Ideally, and use the tool, and then you can just hit a button, and then you can autofill an item. But this yeah. is for people who aren't using Soapbox. This, That's is, this was my awareness tweet. All right. For All my, right. Like, so if you're not using Soapbox, go to the blog post. If you're not using Soapbox, you got to go and start using exactly. it or new name yeah. coming soon. Yeah. So this Have you tried idea. this? Have you um, run this with your team? So he kind of, but no. Okay. Um, okay. I, I was did it today, and then my um, product manager was like, you know what? I kind of just want to talk about some business stuff because we, our deadlines are so crazy. So, like, okay, cool. We won't do it now, but I do want to do it at some point. Yeah, yeah. But in the past, I have used our own suggestion uh, provider to add a question at random to the, the, the thing. So it's the same thing. So the tweet I picked for you, you said, number one career hack, treat all relationships like long-term relationships. And then you add on. At the start, you won't know which ones will be long-term versus short-term. So default to treating people as if it will become long-term relationships. You'll be surprised how this comes full circle. So this came from, man, I've got, I've got sick construction happening. Let's see what it these... It sounds like uh, you're on an airplane. Oh, does it? Okay, cool. I'm flying. Yeah, I'm it. flying today. I'm flying. This is the business suite right here of the, uh, the aircraft. Okay, so guess when I tweeted this one. I mean, without looking at the date. But, but guess what day of the week it was. Probably, I don't know. A Wednesday. Oh, Monday. It was Monday. So we had the call with the board. And the, I think the board basically said this is really bad for us but because we are betting on the long term of graham and brennan we think this is worth it yeah and that's because you invested long term in that relationship yeah and so did you like right six like, years yeah, yeah right so like over the, they've they've you know we've never done it and they've never done anything to us i think either that mm -hmm. was just like short-term thinking like we've never okay. if we've ever made a mistake we just own up to it mm -hmm. um if we ever get feedback we try to improve Anyways, and you know, we brought this thing to them, and we kind of added. We had a want, and like there were a couple board members like, "What do you and Graham want to do?" You just solidified your relationship with them because now you trust them even more because they took the hit for you to be successful. And like, I'll tell like anyone who asks, I'll vouch for them. Like, hey, let me tell you this story that they yeah. had no business, you know, helping me create a good outcome too, yeah. but they did because they're founder friendly. Being founder friendly as a VC is very important in the network. It, it travels for sure. And there's like people who aren't and that, that travels as well. So um, this also works not just for your relationship with the VCs, but also with your employees. I think there's I a think lot so. here. It's all the relationship you have when you're building a business. You never know which relationship is going to become important in the long term. So mm -hmm. always treat every relationship long term. That's how you build trust. But even now, like I have an employee who is mm. about to put in their, res their, their notice. And I've been talking to them about leaving for I say, the last three months. Um, trying to help the person get a good job. We were the reference checks for this person. And like, we're treating that relationship long-term. If they don't want to be here with, with us to, to grow up to the next phase, then it's fine. I want you to be successful there and I'm going to help you do that. And yep. I want to move our business forward. And if it's not together, that's totally yep. fine. Okay, yeah, we only have sure. a couple minutes. So let's talk about you want more money. Yeah, well, I think this is just an ask of every technical lead yeah. in a company. You it's like you, you, we set expect or we set these uh, requirements to build all these amazing things. And then my issue was hands. I don't have enough people to, to build it all. So I found some good people. Now I want more money to build. So, Give but wait, money. how did this happen? Because we were like, we were like, this morning we were like, this wasn't a thing. Um, it was, it was a maybe. It was a maybe. It's, now it's, it's not yes. even like okay. a generic. It's not about the specific relationship. Like if I pass on this specific person, that's fine. I still, I'll always have this ask for, for more resources if, if available, because if we're trying to hit these goals, I want to make sure we're building. I mean, unless you run into capacity, unless you have capacity without enough work, but we've never been there. We've, that's never happened. We've always been under, under capacity and it's not even just building forward. It's also just fixing all the things we have to build or, or fix in the background. Well, first of all, you're always under capacity, but being severely under capacity helps you focus. 
Um, but do you think, think we would end up building? Yeah, there is a line. But do you think we would end up building more things that don't work if we had capacity, too much capacity? Um, not with the team and the approach that we have right now. I think we're very focused on what we have to deliver. And I can just see the time frame ticking away and the amount of mm-hmm. resources we have. Mm-hmm. It's like, we're going to be tight, real tight. I, whenever I ask you for money, I always have Brennan in my head anyway, saying like, well, do you really need it? No, I don't really need it. We'll figure I think, it out. I think my, my, my thought right now, and we're kind of in a precarious state, is like, given the deadline, is it actually additive right now? Right. There's also a window, because I have a new person starting tomorrow, so we're going to onboard that person. Okay. So can I double dip and onboard a bunch of people at once, and then make the call in like six months? Because they're, contr- they're contracts anyway. It's not like we're making long-term Wait, payments. what? <laughs> Wait, what? What? I didn't even know what we're asking about. You just said you want more engineers. How many more engineers are we yeah. talking about? Like 25 engineers? Just one. One. One more. We got two yeah. people instead of one. So I have two people already starting tomorrow. Wait, one what? Contract, Who are these people? One is full-time. Oh, well, okay. Yeah, we one is MP, full-time. One is and full-time. And then you have Curotech. One is Curotech. Yeah, okay. yeah. So I have one BP. contractor. And then I have another contractor who I think could be beneficial to us. I have to ask because it is literally my job to ask for yeah. resources. But I already know it's my hat. I got my that yeah, was my yeah, yeah, yeah. VP engineering hat on, saying I need these resources. But my CTO hat's like you can't afford it, so no, <laughs> it's not going to happen. Yeah. So I think that's it for this episode. <laughs> if you enjoy this content, please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for all of our meta context. And tune we in next go. week for episode five. Ooh, big one.